Hi, I'm a math professor. How many seconds do I have before you zone out? Three. That's a pretty good answer. When I've given this talk before, I would do this, and the guy said, what? <laughs> You're doing well. OK. But if that's the case, then perhaps the best student-teacher interaction is interaction. And maybe the best interaction is a one-on-one -on -one tutor. So tell me, how many people were in your typical classroom in high school? 20, 30. Why wasn't it one? Shouldn't it be one? Because then you can do one-on-one. -on -one. Why wasn't it one? Too expensive. So let's think of the history back in around year 1100, when the monks were making their books and thinking, if only everyone in the world had but one book, then we would all be literate. Of course, back in the 1100s, how did you make books? You wrote them all down. Then something was invented. It was called printing press. And that cost issue went away. We can think about other situations like this. For example, it used to be that if you wanted to listen to some nice music, you would need to have your own private string quartet. But of course, that was solved by another major invention called the phonograph. So this issue about cost, let's revisit this issue of cost. Now, I don't, by the way, I'm not trying to pick on you at all, because you're correct. It, there is a cost issue, and I'm going to split it. But if we go back now, in fact, even in the 1994 speech, it was already commented that, you know, you can already have an automatic system that gives this interactive experience one-on-one -on -one without even the cost of a human. So then the big question is, why isn't this everywhere already? The cost of running such a system could be extremely low. As we know, servers these days are not that expensive to operate. So the actual answer to that, if you dig a little bit deeper, is there is still a cost. It's called a fixed cost. But the variable cost of operation is zero, or practically zero. Does this make sense? Sorry, I'm a mathematician. I like to look at every problem that I ever encounter by taking a step back to revisit how the whole problem is actually framed and try to find a secret solution that will actually solve it better. So here we are. We are at zero, zero, practically zero variable cost to deliver that service called an interactive tutor. There's only this big problem. How big is that fixed cost to program that tutor? Well, given that in 1994, it was already thought about to have such a tutor, and we still don't see one, presumably it's just because that cost is too high, too high for any individual, too high for any institution, too high for any company. If you want to solve this problem then, there's one logical conclusion. It's to take a page from Wikipedia. I don't mean a Wikipedia page. I mean a page from Wikipedia's playbook. And that is called crowdsourcing. And we actually have already seen crowdsourced solutions, such as Wikipedia, Quora, Stack Overflow. And in fact, it's very logical to do the same thing for education if it could only be pulled off. And in fact, that's what XP is. So let me now switch and show you a little bit about that. I want to talk product. In some sense, this talk is less of a PowerPoint and maybe more of a stand-up comedy and live demo. So let's go, let's go to the live demo. So what do I mean by an interactive lesson? Let's watch some physics in action. Is the sound synced? Are we good? Good. That was a four second video, which is a factor of 60 to 100 less than your typical online site. Because, as you said, how long is this time span? It's, you only have three seconds anyway. Instead, there's a question. There's a yes, no question. What do you think, yes or no? Yes. You think it's yes. Oops, I missed on purpose. To show you that you actually will get the feedback as if you had that interactive, that, that, that personal tutor in your pocket. Well, I, I say in your pocket because it works on a mobile, of course. But if you answer correctly, then your tutor keeps talking. And in fact, you can have an entire lesson delivered with practically zero variable cost over the internet because well, you can crowdsource the programming of this tutor. And as you can see, I'm, don't worry so much about the words, I'm just showing you how it feels to interact with this website. It takes three hours to pump out the eight. That is a British accent, and that was the main purpose of this video. Because, notice that, that's a different accent than the first one. In some sense, the first key innovation of this entire site 
is to make it possible to create an article like that, an interactive article like that, without really needing to know how to program at all. In fact, our entire principle is, let's make it as easy as possible for the average person to create an interactive lesson. Of course, we're not going to go as interactive as the most state-of-the-art interactive tutors because we need to be able to be accessible by as many people as possible. So what you see on the left is a new programming language we've invented. It's called English. And we, it's basically right in English. And there are a few things, like you can grab any, any video you want off of YouTube. Does this work? Yeah, it works. You can grab any video you want off of YouTube. You get scissors to do start and end, and boom, you suddenly have the video. If you want to ask a question, then you, you see what we had over there. There's the, state of the statement of the question, ask. And again, it's as lightweight as possible. We are actually creating a WYSIWYG for this even at this moment. So basic principle or for the product, put into the hands of the entire public a toolkit for creating basic components for interactive learning. We're not building the whole kitchen sink, but we want to go up this, up this payoff curve to get as far as possible, that most bang for your buck, so to speak, without going overboard. Then, what happens is that on each of these pages, there's another major innovation on the site, which is that on each of these pages, such as Gravity, there's not only one article. In fact, this is going to now address another major problem in educational content. The major problem is called, it is boring. It's a sad truth. And there are some of us who don't find it boring. Those are all the people who, you know, you kept learning. But the reason it's boring is because there's only one lesson. There's only one article. There's only one calculus book. There's only one course in this, in, in this, in this uh, university on this topic. And it must be one that doesn't offend the sensibilities. It must be plain vanilla. But actually, we like things that are a bit spicy sometimes. Well, I do. But not everyone does. That's why not every food is spicy. And instead, along on the right-hand side, there is a whole bunch of different articles which are competing for what is called fame. Because in some sense, uh, this one here, sorry, this one is a four. This one is 13. And the idea is that the crowd votes to find out what is the best lesson, just like Quora or Yelp or Stack Overflow. So at this point, you actually even provide the ability for every topic to have multiple viewpoints that the crowd has identified. And the last page of the product is that, in fact, the way we organize all of this is in a big map of concepts in which each, con each, each topic, like gravity, is a competition to write the best article in gravity. But this is a flow chart for your skills. And if you zoom out, you see that we've basically created a Google Maps of knowledge, Google Maps of math and science. And if you go into any other topic, like energy, then you suddenly find some article about gravitational potential energy. This, by the way, is all from the crowd. And the key innovation is to allow the crowd to identify all of these different angles and polish them so that you'll be able to create, at practically zero fixed cost, a site which you can deliver at practically zero variable cost, but which provides the world with this interactive tutor that they can all benefit from. I should probably say something about a business because there are investors here. So that was the product. Let me move to business. So to, to, to put into context what our business strategy is, let me put a few slides that I won't maybe say so much about, but they'll illustrate what I'm trying to say. So, before, there were lots of individual websites maybe created by professors, in which case they were showing their own, uh, their own take on this topic, or their, or, or, and they were, they, were, they were all scattered around, um, in some sense like the shareware market of a long time ago. You'd have all these individual pieces, a YouTube video here, my course website here. By golly, every professor has a course website. You've got everything all around. And then there came along two, uh, it was, uh, several big aggregators, like Coursera and Khan Academy. And these were sites which said, here, this is, this is what we recommend that you study. These are, these are certified classes in, in all of these disciplines. Sort of reminds you of something else that was going on in the 1990s, which was internet portals, which were saying, this is, these are the things that we recommend. Although, as we remember from history, you wouldn't actually go to use recipes in the food and cooking. You might be more interested in just searching to find out what is actually the best content of what you're actually looking for. So we're moving along this direction. This is what I mean by rethinking about the entire space. So if you now realize that you're not trying to make an, a, a marketplace which just certifies that these are the right 
pieces of content, or, sorry, where you just make the pieces of content, then you want to make a site which crowdsources all of them because indeed, usually the first article that you click on after searching on Google is what you consider to be, you click on the one that you consider to be the authority called Wikipedia. And as we already know, what Wikipedia did to their competition is they forced Britannica to be free. How do you know Britannica is free? Well, of course, because the Wikipedia article in Britannica says that it's free. But, uh, so, so, so now, the, this, 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 this is where we position ourselves. So we're going actually after creating, we're interested in crowdsourcing the best interactive lessons so that ultimately where we sit on, say, a quality quantity chart is we want to have as much quantity as possible while at the same time having a quality in educational. I'm not saying that those are low quality websites on the lower right. Those are all good sites. But in terms of ease of learning, we want to be maximized. And then for the business model, if you already establish that you're not going to have a variable cost to make a margin on, and therefore you need to have a low fixed cost to start with, the best approach is to immediately set the price at zero, deliver a product which is 10 times better in terms of experience to be an immediate drop-in replacement for all textbooks, and better at that point, page for page. You get viral, you get, you, that's a recipe for viral growth because it solves a problem that people have called, I can't do my homework. And at that point, you monetize the entire company through value-added services on areas that do have variable costs, such as human-based tutoring or certification. So that's where we are going, but we are, our, our first target is simply to go for the viral growth and the millions and millions of users. And for the last things I want to comment on are in terms of validation. So the site actually is one of these sites which you probably have never, many of you have never heard of, because we haven't gone to tell the whole world about it. Instead, we were slowly telling parts of our community so that we could get feedback and keep improving. Nevertheless, throughout this beta, which has been going since about September, we've been getting consistently 2,000 plus monthly uniques coming through who have just heard about the site through word of mouth. There are already 2,000 plus posts on the site. And in fact, we've now started to go to trade shows, like one where there were 9,000 math teachers. That was a month ago. The bottom quote is something we just got in an email after that from one of the teachers. And the bottom line is actually what we have seen from actually talking to teachers is that this, this, this product which we have created is something that excites not only students, but also teachers. And hopefully we'll be able to change the entire landscape of education. And as a final concluding remark, I should say a little bit about, you know, so my background. My background is I'm actually a mathematician. I'm a math professor. I coach the National Math Olympic team. But ultimately, as a mathematician, I like to do one thing. It's called multiply. And my goal is I want to multiply the number of people worldwide who like math and science by 10. And we will do that with XP. Thank you. Thank you.